Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up, I know I've been doing a few talking head videos lately, but I've got a massive story that's extremely time sensitive. So I figured I would go ahead and do it this way so I could get it out as quickly as possible. And there are other stories, starting with Intel's XESS. Your mouse makes your PC vulnerable, Intel GPUs overclock, Intel's 12th gen performance leaked, and thousands of NVIDIA GPUs are dropping. Okay, it's news time, man. First up for today, Intel's principal engineer, I honestly don't even wanna to try to pronounce that because I know I'm gonna mess it up, but this person right here just did an interview with WCCF Tech, and it's really interesting. It's about Intel's upcoming XESS, which is their super sampling technology, similar to say NVIDIA's DLSS or AMD's FSR. And they cover some really interesting things. One of the first things they mention is whether it's comparable to DLSS 2.0. Now, they are saying, you know, yes, it is in the sense that, you know, it uses a neural network. It's the super sampling technique and it generalizes to a similar extent, but of course, because theirs aren't open source, they can't really say for sure, and it's likely very different, just because, you know, if you send two teams to solve the same problem, even if they both do it, they'll probably do it in different ways. So it probably is different, and one thing I will say that is really interesting is the fact that their solution doesn't require training for every game. So that is really good. Um, I believe DLSS 2.0, doesn't, but at least with DLSS 1.0, they did for the most part have to train the neural network for every single game that it sent out, but this does not. And it's really interesting because they actually said, uh, he says it right here, you've seen the demo and I can say that XESS has never seen that demo. Moving on, he asked if they have partnered with any major game developers right now, and he did say that there are several partners that they're working with, but he can't comment about it right now. WCCF Tech's Usman asks about their roadmap where he discusses, you know, DLSS 1.0, DLSS 2.0, and I will say from what we've seen, there is gonna be an FSR 2.0. So obviously the technology is moving as we go along and he says, yes, there will be XESS 2.0 at some point, XESS 3.0 at some point, and he said yes, which this to me at least is a really big deal, we do plan to open source. Now, I will say that while that really is awesome, specifically because it is at least somewhat comparable to AMD's FSR, the difference is obviously because it uses a neural network, it's almost guaranteed that you're gonna have to have a newer GPU that has some type of say tensor core or some type of compute core that can do those type of computations right on the GPU. Although of course I can't say for sure, but given Intel's first GPUs are going to have a type of tensor core in that way, you will likely have to have something like that. So it likely won't be able to work on older GPUs like the 500 series, 1000 series, things like that. So it is comparable to FSR because it is set to become open source. It isn't comparable in the sense that older GPUs will use it. And talking about support for uh, older GPUs, you can see right here where he asked, does it work on hardware with no XMX or DP4A support with an FP16 or FP32 fall? back he said no not at the moment they will look into it but they can't commit to anything right now meaning at least as of right now these definitely won't support you know older gpus like amd's fsr and lastly he discusses xess having different quality modes just like fsr and dlss you can see right here he says we will have the quality modes as both of them have those at this point so you know we will support the same when users are used to it though he also mentions that he wants to point out that one thing that sort of gets lost in these uh different modes performance quality, ultra quality, is that what you really want to have is something like the performance mode produce an image quality that's so close to ultra quality that it doesn't take away from the visual experience. So clearly they do have some really big aspirations from this, hopefully leading to a point where you won't have to have quality mode or anything like that. You just have one mode that gives you significant performance and looks incredibly close to the native high resolution image. And next up for today, we have a really interesting story from Bleeping Computer. 
Come to find out, if we go down here, you can see that uh, Twitter user John Hat, who is apparently a security researcher, actually discovered a vulnerability in the uh, plug and play Razer Synapse installation. Meaning, for those who own, say, Razer mice, you know that when you first plug in the mouse, it actually installs their Razer Synapse program. And through that, you can actually gain system privileges on a Windows device. You can see right here that tech power up says, let me see, it spawns a Windows Explorer dialog that is privileged and can access folders regular users won't be able to. All you have to do is once you're in the dialog, you simply shift, right click on a folder, click on open PowerShell window here to spawn a privileged PowerShell. Meaning, for someone who wants to get admin privileges to your computer who doesn't have it, all they have to do is plug in a Razer mouse. Now, I will say that uh, Tom's Hardware did do an update from Razer where they said, quote, we were made aware of a situation in which our software in a very specific use case provides a user with broader access to the machine during the installation process. We have investigated the issue, are currently making changes to the installation application to limit this use case. So they are gonna be releasing an updated version, which is obviously great, but, that's also pretty wild that there was such oversight that simply plugging in a mouse could grant someone administrative access, which is pretty wild. And it apparently gets worse as allegedly other peripheral makers software uh, installation does the same thing. You can see right here. So they recently did the story on Razer. Well, a new report suggests that Steel Series and its accompanying software for peripherals does the same thing. So for those who have extremely important things on their computers, major businesses, things like that, may at least want to hold off before using any kind of Razer peripheral or ultimately that's kind of the issue. Someone could just come in with said peripheral, plug it in and voila. But of course, hopefully these companies go in and start making these changes pretty quickly. It does sound like Razer's already on top of it. Hopefully we'll hear something from SteelSeries as well. And next up for today, we have a new story on Intel's upcoming ARC GPUs. Remember that their ARC GPU lineup is based on their HPG architecture, which is the architecture specifically made for gaming. And this story actually boils down to one little sentence right here at the end, where it says, quote, we're even integrating overclocking controls into the driver UI to give enthusiasts the tools they need to push the hardware to the limit. Basically, Intel is taking this very seriously. These are not just, you know, crummy whatever GPUs coming out. These are going to be serious competition. At least it looks like they're going to be serious competition for both AMD and Nvidia because when they're released, they're even going to have overclocking. I mean, these aren't Intel's, you know, old iGPUs. Let's just say, I can't wait, I'm excited. And speaking of being excited about things from Intel, their upcoming Alder Lake CPUs are definitely exciting. Don't forget that this is gonna be basically the first time that a desktop CPU is using Intel's 10 nanometer process. And actually, this is gonna be built on an enhanced Superfin 10 nanometers. So think about the Superfin 10 nanometers in Tiger Lake, how impressive those are. Well, this is even better than that. Unfortunately, I will say that this benchmark is a little bit disappointing. As you can see down here, we have the i7-12700 and it was benchmarked in Geekbench. Unfortunately, it didn't do all well. It did do well, but it didn't do as well as we thought. Now, really quickly, I will go ahead and say it either didn't look at it properly or the 12,700 non-K model is gonna be different from the K model. You can see that it shows one processor, eight cores, 16 threads, while the 12,700K has eight P cores, four E cores for a total of 20 threads. Remember that the E cores don't have multi-threading, so the final thread count is a little wonky, but Either way, this is clearly lacking those four E cores. So maybe the benchmark wasn't done right. I really don't know. But when we go down here, you can see it got a single core score of 1595 and a multi core score of 10,170. And what's great about this video cards article is that they actually compare it to uh, similar cores 
with Geekbench. First up, we can see that the 12,700 does beat the 11,900, even though its base clock is higher. Now, really quickly, I will say that the base clock being 2.1 does seem fairly low, and that's yet another thing. It could easily be an early engineering sample and we'll see even better performance after this. But as of right now, it absolutely beats the 11,700, at least in multi-core performance, but in single core, it does lose, which once again, kind of makes me think that this is an early engineering sample, but regardless, it did beat it handily beat it in multi-core performance. We can see it's 8,822 versus 10,170. The thing is that it did lose to the 5800X, but remember that the 5800X should be going up against the 12,700K, but these are older CPUs at this point, so it isn't really that great, but it's comparing it to last gen. Still, once again, with the issue in reporting or likely issue in reporting with it being eight cores, 16 threads and the lower base frequency, at least potentially lower base frequency, I will say that it should be quite a bit better, but we shall see. But forget all of that because it isn't anywhere near the good news that is today's final story. You can see right here, we have the story from PC Gamer, where a massive restock of NVIDIA RTX 30 GPUs is gonna be happening at Best Buy tomorrow. Now, this story originally comes from a tweet by GP Restock Monitor, where you can see that they actually got some stock numbers and store lists for Founders Edition 3000 series cards. And what's pretty amazing is that they actually have a total of 17,000 units coming in. We're talking 3090, 3080, 3070, 60Ti, 80Ti, 3070Ti, pretty much everything. And they actually list just about everything right here. Now, I will say that some people kind of divided it up between all of their stores and found, oh, that's, you know, that's not that many per store. But I will say that they actually didn't do it between all of their stores. Now, there are quite a bit of stores, but as you can see, there's a significant amount of GPUs of each GPU at each store that it is going to be dropping at. So... It won't be dropping at every Best Buy store, but obviously some of their major ones are gonna be dropping and those that are, are gonna have quite a bit of GPUs. I mean, we're talking hundreds of GPUs per store. So with that, I will say that I'm gonna have affiliate links to Best Buy down in the description. They don't cost you anything more and they help the channel out. With that said, I'm not 100% sure if you'll actually be able to get it delivered or if you'll have to go and pick it up at the store. Either way, this really is great news for anyone who's really been trying hard to buy a new GPU. So while that does it for today, I know I rambled a lot, as I pretty much always do with these talking head videos, but there were some really interesting stuff to discuss. But let me know if you were able to purchase a GPU from Best Buy in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. And as always, have a great day.